Everything that has to do with what God has said. Like coming to church. Like giving. Like praying for the sick. Why does Satan hate everything that has been ordained in the word of God? Because he hates it. But if there is one feast that Satan hates with his passion, it's Passover. It's Passover. He hates it with his passion, with all his heart. Please come back, Mr. Bungwe. I'm feeling empty. He hates it with everything in him. Why does he hate that? You know, the kingdom of darkness understands the spiritual principles more than most Christians. Most Christians, they've taken Christianity as another form of social cohesion. We are Christians because we mingle. We are Christians because we count our, we, we regard ourselves through our responsibilities. I'm a deacon. I'm a worshiper. And, 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 and. But there is more in Christianity than what we do. There is more in Christianity than what I'm doing right now. There is more in Christianity than what is doing. The worship team, the band, and all that. The ushering team. There is more to that. And that more is found in the obedience of the word of God. And I'll tell you to someone tonight. You see, going to church on Sunday is the best thing that you can ever do for yourself. Attending all the meetings where the saints are gathering is the best thing that you can ever do for yourself. But the greatest thing that you can ever do for yourself is honoring and obeying the word of God. Am I talking to someone? The, one of the, the greatest things that you can ever do for yourself if, is honoring and obeying the word of God. So, tonight, I want to say why Satan hates Passover. We're going to start with uh, Genesis 12. Genesis 12, because it's all started there. Genesis 12. Father, it's about to read your word, bless your word. We thank you that you are speaking. And I thank you, mighty God, that, Father, you are framing the words that are coming out of my mouth, releasing the heavenly mysteries through this mouth. Thank you, Father, that your word shall never come back to you void. Your word shall accomplish that which purpose to accomplish and prosper the thing that you send it to. In Jesus' name, amen. Now the, Lord, now the Lord had said to Abraham, get out of your country, from your family and your, from your father's house, to a land that I will show you. I will make you a great nation. I will bless you and make your name great. You shall be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you. I will curse those who curse you. But the key word where Passover come from, 12.3. I will bless those who bless you. I will, I will curse him. Who you. And in you, do you understand? In you, all the family of the earth shall be blessed. When I say word Passover, this is where the journey to Egypt of the children of Israel started. When God met Abraham, if, if you go to Genesis 15, when God cuts a covenant with Abraham, 
He said to him, Your children shall go to a land. They will be afflicted for 400 years. And after 400 years, I will release them. Satan couldn't read between the lines that God is planning the salvation of mankind. In all his wisdom, in all his knowledge, he couldn't see that the calling of Abraham is about the restoration of mankind. And he knew he was going to eliminate Abraham from the beginning. Hallelujah. He was going to eliminate him from the beginning. And he was going to eliminate the father of the 12 patriarchs, Isaac, from the beginning. But he did not see that one coming. After 400 years, the children of Israel in slavery, and in slavery, Egypt was one of the superpowers then. It was the superpower. They had 10 gods, main gods, above all the other 300 gods that they had. And Satan was in charge of Egypt. He was ruling in Egypt. The marine spirits were ruling through, through Nile River and other gods. And he was using God's chosen people to build his demonic empire. The, Egypt, the Egyptian kingdom. And to him, it was victory. Because he knew that those ones were the chosen people. But he did not know that the Messiah is coming out of them. Hallelujah. So if you can go study, I've studied this, all the templates represent the Egyptian gods. Every plague that happened in Egypt dealt with, a, dealt with an Egyptian god. It was a symbol of a defeat of an Egyptian god. But their main god was the sun. It was, it was, his name was Re. Egyptian sun god Re. The Bible tells us that towards the end when Pharaoh was being stubborn, darkness fell upon Egypt. When darkness fell upon Egypt, it was a sign that their God is defeated. And Satan did not like that. But I want to put it to you again that the death of the firstborn and so that's 12 God gave an instruction to Moses on what should be done we'll read it okay let us go to Exodus 12 I want, to, I want to understand why Satan has a deep hatred for Passover and why the first casualty of Corona in the Christian calendar was Passover not Christmas the first casualty in the Christian calendar of Corona was Passover. The first thing that was dealt with was the observance of Passover. Why? Because there is power in celebrating Passover. And many children of God are not aware of that. Exodus 12. Now the Lord spoke to Moses, I'm starting from one, and Aaron in the land of Egypt, saying, This man shall be the beginning of man. He shall be the first man of the year to you. Check this. Before God can do anything, he's starting with the man. He's saying, I'm resetting your season. This man shall be the beginning of the man to you. In other words, the children of Israel were already in the cycle of the Egyptians' calendar. Are we together? 
And God is saying, I'm taking you out of the cycle. I'm taking you out of the demonic cycle. I'm giving you a new calendar. It's so funny how Christians want to serve God with, through a demonic calendar using demonic seasons. You know, I can only go to church, you know, when it suits me, you know. I've got important things to do. We set up, we talk about it. You know, I've got a family gathering, you know. You know, all oh, any anything that the enemy creates that is against you being in the house of God, he's trying to undo Exodus 12. Hallelujah. He said, this month shall be your first month of the year to you. I <laughs> check this. I imagine. I, I love God. He's saying, there is a calendar, but there is me and you going to have our seasons. You, you don't understand. I, I, am I too deep? No, it can't, it can't be too deep. He started he start, he start by creating a season before Passover. So this man shall be a first man between bit bit for you. And, and check this. Verse 2. Speak to all the congregation of the congregation of Israel, say, On the tenth month of this year, every man shall take for himself a lamb. According to the house of his father, a lamb for the household, and for this for, for his household too small. And if household is too small for the lamb, let him let him in, be in his neighbor next to his house. Let take according to the number of the persons. According to each man's need, shall you take your count of the lamb. Your lamb shall do without blemish. Your lamb shall do without blemish. Let me tell you the story about lamb without blemish. The shepherds who saw the star about the birth of Jesus Christ, they were produced by this verse. The lamb shall do. They were called Levitical shepherds. They were the shepherds of the sheep that were meant to give birth to lambs that were used for sacrifice. And when, the, when, the, when those shepherds, when those lambs were given birth to, they would take them and put them in a manger. Why? The lambs were too active. We know the lambs. They will sometimes run carelessly and help themselves. And the, the Levitical shepherd's job was to protect the lambs against themselves. So that when they are sacrificed on the altar, they are the lamb without what? Blemish or what? Spot. They will be wrapped and put in a manger. And be taken care of there. Some of you got the good. I'm sure some of you got the revelation already. Where was Jesus Christ born? He was raped and put away. Oh, we are, we are getting somewhere. We are getting somewhere. Now, now you understand your Bible, no? He said, now you shall keep it until the 14th day of the same month. Then the whole assembly of the congregation shall kill it at twilight. They shall take some of the blood and put it on the two doorposts on the lintel of the houses where they eat. Then they shall eat the flesh at night, which roasted in fire, with unleavened bread and bitter herbs, they shall eat it. What does the unleavened bread stand for? The unleavened bread stand for the body of Christ. And the bit and the bitter, the unleavened herbs stand for repentance and the removal of sin. And the bitter herbs stand for bondage and sin. So I want you to try this. Eat chili in your house. After they eat bread, what happened to the chilliness in your mouth? It moves. Mm -hmm. it, it goes. So the unleavened bread is the one that removes what? The bondage of sin. Through what? Repentance and removal of sin. So the whole setup is happening under whose nose? Satan's nose. And I won't read it for the sake of time. And, and God said, put the blood away on your doorpost so that when the angel of death came, he doesn't touch what? Your house. And guess
first who died after the angel of God, after the angel of death came, the firstborn of every what? Person and beast in Egypt. Pharaoh was regarded as the second, as the second God after the God of the sun ra. And all the firstborn in Egypt were dedicated to the God of the sun, Ra. Or Ra or R-E. R -E. So when the firstborn were killed, the sons of the kingdom of darkness were destroyed first. Because the real firstborn was being introduced. The firstborn among the sanctified brethren. Are we together? Hallelujah. So this is one celebration that Satan hated a lot. Why? Because God is distracted. In Exodus 13, verse 1 up to 7, write it down. We're not going to go through it. We'll go through this on Sunday again. On Exodus 17, Exodus 18, verse 1 up to 7, God instructed that you will remember this day whenever God instructs you to observe a particular season, there are blessings connected with that. Hallelujah. Amen. And there are what you call nine blessings of Passover. Passover is what? Nine blessings. That's the reason why I'm paraphrasing. We'll go through this in detail on Sunday. Né? But for now, I'll just give you a, a, a heads up. That's the reason why when Jesus Christ was celebrating Passover, he took his disciples and he celebrated with them. Why? He was bestowing the, the, the nine blessings of Passover upon them. Without those nine blessings, the apostles couldn't do what they did. Because yeah. they, they would have observed what God has ordained. Are we together? Okay. Why Satan hates Passover? Write these reasons down. Some of them. Because Passover is about Jesus Christ. We'll go, we'll go through this in detail on Sunday. Passover is about Jesus Christ. Passover is part of God's plan of salvation for us. Which Satan didn't see, by the way. Apart from Passover, the Jews would have died in as slaves in Egypt and Jesus would have been born and there will be no salvation. So Passover is, is Satan hates it because it's the result of the blood covenant relationship between God and Abraham. I know I know it's too deep, it's too deep like you're in Bible school, but it's okay. You don't understand the grace is there. I spoke about this Egyptian son, God. All firstborn males were dedicated to the Egyptian son. So the day they died, all the strongholds of Satan in Egypt were destroyed. Because the ones who were strengthening his presence, the firstborn, were destroyed. And it is a reminder, a constant reminder to him that the beginning of my defeat started in Egypt. Passover. Hallelujah. Amen. On the first, on the morning of the 14th day of the first month, as God is dedicated, the lamb, 9 o'clock in the morning, the lamb was slain in Egypt. On the same day, the same time that Jesus Christ was crucified, on the first month of Nisan, nine o'clock, Jesus was crucified. So Passover reminds Satan of his what? Defeat on the cross. And to top it all, what makes Satan more mad is that he did not see it coming. 
why God says the mistress are what? The children's bread. They are for us. As God was busy revealing his plan for salvation, Satan was busy playing marbles, thinking that he's in charge. So, as you celebrate Passover, God will begin to reveal things unto your hands that even Satan won't see them. Those who observe the Passover are the ones who live through the mysteries of God. And by the mysteries of God. By the mysteries of God. Am I talking to someone? Okay, we'll, we'll come back to to, to this again. I prepared a lot of notes, but I'm not going to touch them today. I'll just touch a few. The rest will go through that on Sunday. Don't, don't be surprised why I printed. I couldn't transfer to my tablet. It was misbehaving. I think it missed the hands of Murendeni. And Murendeni was too busy. I want us to go to... Let us first go to... Leviticus 23, go study it at home, write, write it down. Leviticus 23, once you understand Leviticus 23, you don't understand why it, talk, it, talk, it speaks about the feast of the Lord. All these other feasts have taken place. The only feast that we are waiting for is the feast of the tabernacle. And then the world come to an end. So we are towards the last feast. All these other feasts are done. We are only left with the feast of the tabernacle. When Jesus Christ will be dwelling in us. With us. Gasset. But we will we'll come to that one. I want us to go to Exodus 23. Just take notes. I have been given 20 minutes. Take notes of the blessings of Passover. Number one, why Satan hates it so much? What you partake in? Number one is divine protection. Passover gives us what? When we celebrate Passover, we partake in what? Divine protection. Exodus 23, verse 20. Let us read it. So that's 23 verse 20. Behold, I sent an angel before you to keep you in the way to bring you into the place which I prepared. So whenever God, whenever you celebrate Passover, you are all, you are partaking on the divine protection. That's why Jesus Christ said to his, to his disciples, let us sit together at the table. The table of Passover is the most important celebration even to this day in the Jewish culture because this way they believe that all these blessings come upon them. And for real they do. If Jesus Christ himself called his 12 disciples, sat with them on the table and celebrate Passover with them, what about us? Why, why can't the church Take this season seriously. Hallelujah. Amen. Number two, protection from the enemies through positioning and alignment. You know, there is a blessing of positioning and alignment where God positions you and align you such a way that even your enemies can touch you. Exodus 23, verse 26. No. Exodus 23 verse 22 but he said if you obey his voice and do all that I speak then I will be and I will be an enemy to your enemies and an adversary to your adversaries why? as you align yourself with this commandment that observe this season God is saying he will be an enemy to your enemies so imagine just by observing the Passover, we are partaking in these blessings. Am I talking to someone? Number three, you, you, you are given divine authority. Not because 
just by being on the table with Jesus Christ. We are given what? Divine authority. Exodus 23 verse 24. We'll go to this in detail on Sunday. So you, he says that you shall not bow down to their gods nor serve them. Nor do up with but you shall utterly overthrow them and completely break down their secret pillars. Let me tell you about these secret pillars. When you go to the office, there are people who have raised their altars in companies, in offices. When you move to other businesses, there are people who, who raise their altars. But when you move in, by the results of the Passover blood of the Lamb, those altars become powerless to, to, to you. Instead, you destroy them. Am I talking to someone? How many of you are a success? Check this. One of the things that the enemy didn't want us to observe Passover before COVID-19 was because of Exodus 23 verse 25. He said, you shall serve the Lord God and you will bless your bread and your water and you will take sickness away from your midst. The other ones are saying, you will take plagues away from your midst. You will take sickness away from your midst. He knew that the real, if the real Christians can observe Passover, no plague will stand. That's the reason why the first casualty was Passover. Because he knew that if the seven blessings are bestowed upon the church, the, those who celebrate Passover, they will have dominion. They will have authority. Whatever they say shall come to pass. Imagine, Moses had authority over the voice of King Pharaoh. Whatever he said came to pass. And Satan and his magicians or witches were helpless to stop what Moses was doing. Because he had dominion authority. And when the plagues fell upon Egypt, the, boil, the plagues of boils, the children of Israel were free from those plagues. They were never touched by any of the ten plagues. And God is saying here, and in, 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 in one of the blessings number four of, of Passover, that you, you have supernatural health, and not that only, and prosperity. He said, God, I will bless your bread. Your bread is the investment. Cast your bread in the waters. Am I talking to someone? Oh, I know it's a different gospel today. But anyway, let's move on. So I will take sickness away from your midst. I will take sickness away from your midst. There are plans right now to move us to level two so that we don't congregate as we ought to. Meaning, Easter's not Easter, I can say that in Jesus' name. Passover celebration might be affected again. Why? Why is the plan? This and this, this power. So why did you know that Satan knows what he's doing right now against Passover? He hates it so much, he knows what he's doing right now. If you read Exodus 23 in conjunction with Genesis 12 and 15, Leviticus 23, and also Exodus 12 and 13, you realize that it is all about the covenant. It's all about Jesus Christ. And up, upon all the feasts of the Lord, this one, Passover, is the one that represents the death and crucifixion of Jesus Christ. And, and also it includes the second feast, and living bread. So it is it is past in this season two feasts, the Passover feast and then living bread. And living bread with which, which represents the taking of sins through what repentance. Peter heads representing what? The the results of sin or the bondage of sin. So it is this season that the enemy is against a lot. Because once we sit here in the altar and celebrate, believe you me, 
Corona is dead. Amen. They know that the plagues are included in one of the blessings. Hallelujah. Amen. Number five. Exodus 23 verse 26. It talks about the covenant of what? No one shall suffer miscarriage or be barren in your land. I will fulfill the number of your days. Again, this is the covenant of what? Long life. No one will die premature death through the so-called what? COVID. So because of Satan's understanding of, the, of this, of the Passover, he is now he's up, above all things. What is fighting against is these nine blessings from manifesting. Because he knows that if we can come to church and celebrate Passover with revelation and knowledge and decree and declare and, and de decree and declare words, none of his plans shall stand. Amen. Am I talking to someone? Amen. Number six, a godly release of fear and respect from enemies. Wherever you go, I've seen that happening. Wherever you go, people will just have reverence of you. Even those who are planning to, to harm you will come and confess that, you know, we had a plan. One of us had a plan. I, it, it has happened to me. One of the PAs came to me and said, I, I don't know the God that you are praying. Do you know how many meetings we had to get you fired? And every time when you appear in the boardroom, every plan just just go. And all of them who planned that, none of them is there in the, in, in the executive now. God has a way of releasing godly fear to your enemies. And even the Passover, that's why there is that the reason why when the children of Israel were, were on their way to their promised land, where other nations heard about the children of God, the Bible says, Fear and dread came upon them because they heard what God has done for the children of Israel on, this, on the Red Sea. When you open the Red Sea, why? Fear and dread will come against those who are fighting against you when they hear, when they heard what God has done in your previous life. So this is one of the blessings of Passover. Am I talking to someone? Wow, Exodus 23, verse 27, let us read it. He said, I will send my fear before you. I will cause confusion among all the people to whom you come and make all, all your enemies turn your backs on you. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Seven, relief from the threat of the enemies. Exodus 28. I will, honest, I will send honest before you. They shall drag out the, the Hivetite, the Canaanites, and the Hittites before you. Whatever that God... You know, do you have plans? Do you have plans in life? Send so them pass over. God will send through, will send people or the angels to go before you and make a way before you, before you even get there. That, that's one of the blessings of Passover. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Eight. The gift of dominion and increased inheritance. Exodus 23, 8. Little by little I will drive them out before you until you, until you increase and inherit the land. God, some of us here are rushing God. God is saying, as you grow spiritually, I'll be giving you dominion on your place of dominion. Amen. 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 It doesn't have to do it what? Little by what? Little. Our church. Little by what? Little. We'll, we'll go through this again on Sunday. And, and whatever you do, don't miss Sunday. Because we'll be teaching, we'll be going deeper into this. And I'm 100% sure that after these blessings, just by hearing them, there'll be deliverance. And by the time we celebrate Passover on Friday, 
you'll be celebrating Passover with revelation. Things will be happening in your life. Hallelujah. Freedom from corrupt covenants and exodus. You know, there are times that we meet people. We want to enter into business with them. One of the sons in the house, he was approached by people that they wanted to enter into business with him. And he said, already, you are told that people are coming. Don't enter into business with them because they have wrong covenants. They are operating the wrong spirits. Many people are in trouble because they have covenants with people with the wrong spirits. God will save you from marrying wrong people. God will save you from entering into wrong covenants. Those are the blessings of Passover. I read them so fast. I, I'm not, I'm not going to go through all my notes or, or through all, all the feasts. Your homework, go and read Leviticus 23 and read Exodus 23 also. Read Genesis 15, 12 to 15. Understand, because in this Genesis, Genesis 12 to 15, Exodus 12, 13, 15 and 23, there is a hidden plan of God where God was revealing Messiah. Hallelujah. Are we together? Amen. How many of you are ready to partake in the nine blessings of the Passover? Go and do this homework. I'll stop here tonight. I was given only 20 minutes. The rest, God said, you know what God, what God was doing here. Amen. Amen. Now you understand why no, you don't understand. Now you know why there were 10 plagues in Egypt. There is also the firstborn of the sons, the God of the sun. The God of the sun used to work with the God of the Nile River. I'll, I'll explain to you that. And also the corruption of Easter. Easter was the goddess of fertility. Goddess of fertility. The word Easter comes from that. They, they tried by all means to corrupt Passover. Contestine the Great is one of the Roman empires, Roman, uh, Roman rulers who did most of the damage on the Passover by trying to remove the sequence of the Passover in order to defeat and confuse the Jews. Because they realize that when these guys celebrate their feasts, they become smarter, wiser, and stronger. So they have to be defeated through confusion. That's the reason why you see today, when you speak about Passover, people think of what? Bunny what? Bunny eggs and, and all that. It is meant, my apologies, it is meant to dilute the effect of the nine blessings. Passover is not Easter. It's not about bunny eggs and chocolate. No, no, no. It's about the introduction of Messiah and the eternal defeat of Satan and his kingdom. That we have to know. And if we as a church, well, I can call it a small church in number, but spiritually we are giants. As we are, if we can do the right thing in this season, in our houses, in this place, we shall be able to overcome by aligning ourselves with the seasons of God. That's the reason why when God started in Exodus 12, he said, for you, this shall be your first month. And when Jesus Christ was crucified, he was crucified on the first month that God declared on Exodus 12. That for you, shall, the same time, the same time that they slaughtered the lamb, is the same time, 9 o'clock in the morning, that Jesus Christ was on the cross, was, was being crucified. So the same season of Passover is the same season that, 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 that brought forth our salvation. Do you understand? So there is more. I, I didn't go deeper into Passover tonight because God changed the direction. 
There is more in Passover that we need to know. I will go through this in detail on Sunday so that we can do what we know. Passover is not time for traveling, for going to see people. No. Passover is time to spend time in your altar, meaning your church. Whoever is watching me right now, don't, don't allow Satan to steal the blessings of Passover from you. It's not the time to do anything else but to celebrate the greatest victories ever in human history. The redemption of mankind from the kingdom of darkness. Hallelujah. Amen. Can you all stand up? Can you all stand up? Father, I thank you. We have heard your word. And I know that, mighty God, you are still going to talk to us about this. I thank you, mighty God, that is about to go to sleep. Let everybody be covered with the blood of Jesus Christ. Let the angels of the Lord encompass our us and deliver us. Father, continue to release and minister this revelation unto your children. In Jesus' name, amen. We may come and give. You may come and give. You may come and give.